but that's not really what I do. So all the photos, by the way, on my presentation are taken from a manufacturer and the process that I've now gone through, figuring out how the hell someone makes socks. Um, so who am I? Uh, I am a journalist who played in a rock band that failed, um, <laughs> who went on to start a tech company and started to mix it, and I now do mobile consulting. So just so everyone knows, Mixsocks doesn't earn me enough money to actually live. It's a nice fun side project. Um, so, as I said, I do mobile, that's what my speciality is, travel around Africa for my clients and do deals with mobile network operators. So, with that said, why on earth did I start to suck the client? Why is a very simple answer. Um, it's the, one I, the question I get most often is, why on earth would you sell socks? Um, so I just sold my mobile company to Mixit. Um, I was pretty bound by confidentiality in the throes of legal, sorting out deals. Selling a company is definitely not as glamorous as they tell you it is. I can guarantee you that firsthand. It's messy and sticky and often very mean. Um, and I'd forgotten why business is supposed to be fun. And business is supposed to be fun. I understand that for most of us it's a living, but it's supposed to be fun. So. Um, this is going to get a little graphic, unfortunately. I was lying on the couch in my boxes, watching TV in a massive depression because I just let go of my baby of two years. Um, and I decided that I needed to remember why business was fun. And I put my socks on. And I've been wearing Happy Socks, the brand, for about three years. Um, good socks, but I had some problems with them. The cotton. Uh, the cotton is imported. The socks are imported. It's a Scandinavian company. The cotton comes from Turkey. The socks are pretty expensive. They've come down in price because having socks now there's volume. But at that time, they were about 220 rand a pair, and they kept breaking really, really quickly, like within a month of wearing or two months ago. So I thought to myself, how can I do this cheaper, better, and locally? Maybe I should try, look, and see. Now, Elon Musk has got a theory called first principles, and if you don't know anything about this concept, I'll give you some thoughts, and then you can go and research it yourself. The basic premise is break everything down to its absolutely most basic part, and then start from there. So I did that. I decided to figure out what goes into socks, what are the different options for socks, um, and then how to make them, and if I can do them locally. Uh, that was one of the premises of the company. So I did some research, and it turns out that you can make socks pretty easily in Cape Town, all locally, um, and you can use fabric better than cotton. So I chose bamboo. Bamboo is environmentally friendly, sustainably grown, it's better for your feet, um, and it's made in Durban. So our bamboo is made in Durban, shipped to Cape Town, it's dyed in Cape Town, which is pretty unique as well. The, dye is, the dyed bamboo is then shipped to our manufacturer in Epping, and they make our socks. Nice and easy. Um, so how does that work? Now this is actually um, one of some of the machines, and the previous one, this is actually a, a 50 year old sock machine that makes a seamless sock at the toe. So we all hate that seam at the toe. The reason we don't do that is it costs money. Um, so the socks would then be more expensive. But yeah, that's a really old machine, really interesting. Um, so how does this actually work? The most amazing thing that I discovered um, was that you can make socks without any cost up front. So that figured off something really interesting in my head, and I thought, okay, cool, let's set the next goal. So the first goal was do everything locally. So I wanted everything to be South African. So to jump forward, right now we, I've told you all about manufacturing is done locally. We also ship internationally using the post office, the post office, we've yet to lose an international product, and the quickest time, I've delivered a pair of, pair of socks from Cape Town to San Francisco in four days, using the post office. Wow. So be careful, like, you know, the stuff that can be really done really simply here. Um, so, the next thing to think of was the actual the platform that we were going to use. So I thought, okay, if I can make socks without any cost up front, and I don't want to spend any money, the next goal that I should set myself is to launch this business as quickly as I can. So six weeks was my goal, and as cheaply as I can, 5,000 Rand was my next goal. So now, we've got a local business in six weeks with five Rand. Is that possible? Living proof, yes that is. One of the biggest things that I had as criticism for studying Motrive was, oh, you had it easy, you got money. We got funding, and we did. We had a venture capitalist give us some money. The argument against that is as soon as you raise funding, you raise debt. So it makes life a little bit more tricky. Bootstrapping is often the safer route to go. Um, so I wanted to prove people wrong. I wanted to prove to people that it is as easy to build and sell or build and become profitable if you do it yourself or if you do it with funding. So 5,000 Rand, six weeks, and free. Everything else was free. So the thing about the socks, I found a really nice manufacturer who was really friendly to me and understood that I was completely clueless and he was very, very happy to help me. So we did it. 
he explained to me the whole process of things, and then at the end he said some really magical words to me. He said, so send me some designs and I'll make you some samples. I was like, what do you mean? He said, well, I'll send you some samples. So how much do I have to pay for these? No, no, we'll send them to you for free. I was like, no way, are you serious? And that's what I did. So I made six designs, I sent them to him, and a week later I had six pairs of socks that I then photographed, put up on WordPress, and sold. I didn't have any stock, I'd spent no money. And I sold these socks. And I sold 800 pairs in 10 days. Like, that's, I'm oversimplifying, because the next part of what I want to talk about is that platform is actually irrelevant to the business idea. Technology has become so simple that it doesn't matter what you use. I use WordPress because I have for the last seven years. Started blogging in 2005. I've used WordPress to do a hell of a lot of stuff. And with WooCommerce, um, big ups to WooCommerce and Obox, because between the two of them, I have the perfect system. For under $100, you can get a site live. My hosting is $4 through Bluehost. There is no reason to not do something that is a side passion project because it is just so simple and so cheap to do. Um, so the how around actually selling products, um, we've all heard the saying, and it could be more true in South Africa, if you build it, they will come bullshit. That is not true, okay? Uh, everyone here who's got an e-commerce website can attest to that. If you build it, they will not just come. I've been blogging for almost a decade, and on average, I get 100 views a month. <laughs> come on, I've got stuff to say. Um, so, so the point is, when I'm getting to the real how of business, has nothing to do with online, has nothing to do with e-commerce, it has nothing to do with WordPress or WooCommerce or Overwatch, or my socks for that matter. It has to do with business acumen. The truth is, business is business is business. It doesn't matter whether you're selling stocks, you're selling beer, you're selling WordPress sites, it doesn't matter. You have to do business. You have to do business development, you have to hustle, you have to make the sales. Just having an e-commerce site does not equate to sales. It's really that simple. You think it might, but we don't live in the US. SEO is not going to help you sell 10,000 pairs of socks a month. I'm sorry, it just isn't. So how did I sell socks, the real how? I got off my ass and I met people. I met people with audiences, because I didn't have an audience. The one thing that I need, my socks are good quality, um, they're local, they have a great story behind it, everything's there. What isn't there is traffic. And anyone in this country, or Africa for that matter, will attest that the people getting the traffic are the people with the money to do above the line advertising. It's really that. So, I partnered with people. The most recent deal is we're about to launch an affiliate deal with Made in Guardian, one of the biggest news websites in the country. That's how you get audience. You don't get audience by sitting in your ass and hoping that someone comes to your site. You don't get audience from Google either, because I'm in a very, very, very niche socks, and I cannot get onto the front page of Google. I just can't. I can't even bid on the keywords because they're too expensive. Because there are competitors globally who have more money than me. So you have to hustle. Um, PR is the other half. I've done a lot of PR, getting into magazines, and newspapers, and constructing a story and a brand around my brand. So. If I was to say to people, oh, yeah, you know, I'm a guy in bed and I sell socks, they're like, thanks, buddy. <laughs> no one cares about that. You have to construct a brand, and my brand is very simple. Designer, limited edition, men's socks. That's it. Three words. Four words. Yeah, four words. So with those four words, people immediately understand what I'm selling and who my market is and why they should write about me. The why is, well, because we're local, and we support local, and with bamboo, no one has bamboo socks. There's a lot of things that the brand helps. WordPress is a very, very simple platform that helped me build my idea and put it online. But once that was done, that was done. WordPress is just the medium. It's not the message anymore. And it used to be the message. WordPress as a story five years ago used to be the platform. Wow, WordPress is amazing. It's so easy. It's so simple. That stuff's all given now. But yes, WordPress is simple. It is easy. It is free. WooCommerce helps. Get all that stuff done and build a business. And when you're doing that, then you have to build a business. That's the tricky part. So the last thing, um, Last two things, oh, I'm going to give a minute, it's over nine minutes. Um, the last two things are pretty important. Breaking the rules is something that I kind of, I struggled with a lot starting a, an internet, uh, an e-commerce sock company. So fashion is quite a hotly contested market locally for a few reasons. One, the textile industry is tanking in this country, hugely, at a rapid rate. No one can afford to build and sell or make anything. In Durban, a factory is closing down every day. That's not a made up stack. There is actually literally a manufacturing factory closing down every day. You can go and I can buy sock machines for a steal because they've just been thrown out. That's how bad the textile industry is. 
And unfortunately, it doesn't help when people don't want to change the way they think about stuff. So when I started the idea in my head, I wanted to meet people who knew about socks. So I went to met with buyers from Woolworths and Machini and Edgars, and I said to them, this is what I want to do. And, and they literally laughed at me. They literally said, that will never work. You'll never sell socks online. No one wants to buy socks only. You have to sell socks and underwear, and you have to become a fashion brand. And I was like, but have you done it? No, we haven't tried, but no one's going to buy socks. You can't do it. It won't work. So I was like, okay, maybe this can't work. And I went to the next guy. Same thing. Can't do it. It's never going to work. And then I started looking online and realized that there was a need for it. And I started asking people, you know what the truth is? I was the biggest customer I had. I wanted socks. So I actually didn't give a shit. So I went and I spent 3,000 rand making socks for myself to wear. And then other people started buying them off my site. And then you start to realize that if you're your own customer, maybe someone else wants this. And the truth is, in this really, really vast world, the internet has connected us to such an extent that if you like something, I guarantee you there are a million people out there who like it. You just have to find them. That's the key. You have to put your stuff online and find the people who like what you like. So that's what I did. I broke the rules and I decided to forget all the manufacturing rules and all the retail rules. The major, major thing that people said to me is you have to stock your socks in retail. I was like, why? What do you mean? No, your socks have to go into store. But why? Well, because that's where the traffic is. That's where the foot traffic physically is. People won't buy your socks if they can't see them. And I was like, yeah, but if I stock them in store, then I have to give you a wholesale price, right? Yes, okay. So if I give you a wholesale price, I'm going to make less money. Yes. Okay, well then I'm not going to stock, stock my socks in your store. I'm going to think you're not going to sell socks. And I was like, yeah, but I have my own shop. A website. And the textile and retail industry don't understand that. Something we have up on them. They sell items through people coming through their doors. We sell items through eyes coming through ours. And it's sometimes easier to get eyes and feet, especially in the retail space. So I broke the rules and I don't stock in, I don't have a wholesale price, I don't stock in retail. I sell online and I sell online exclusively. If I do put them in stores, there's 10 pairs here and there, in very exclusive stores. So some of the problems with e-commerce, I've got five minutes left. Um, the, I'm gonna make you look at this for a second. This is actually a week of sales, a month of sales for me. Now, this might look okay, big spikes in the middle, but one, two, three, four, five, six, there's about 10 dead days, dead, dead, dead. And I used the last three weeks as another good example. Um, and Dave from Obox actually said this to me, if you don't have enough volume, you can't learn enough about your data, and that's complete truth. So three weeks ago, I had the biggest week of my entire business. I think we made 10 grand a week. Friggin' amazing. Sold a lot of socks, awesome. The last 12 days, I haven't sold a single thing. Not one. I even went two days ago and tested my own sites. I bought a pair of my own socks to see if it was maybe broken. But this is the problem with e-commerce that we as small niche products are facing is that the volume isn't there. And that's the truth, the volume isn't there. Um, if you're gonna look at the numbers, let's assume that there are 12 million South Africans on the internet in South Africa with broadband fast enough to go to my very high-end site with a lot of big pictures. If you assume that of that time, if you've got 12 million people and 10% of them are credit cards, you're looking at 1.2 million people with credit cards. If you're looking at 10% of that, and these are high estimations, who've ever spent online, you're looking good, so now you've got 120,000 people with credit cards who bought something online. For me, half of those are male more like less than half a male. Of those men who bought online, looking at 40,000 people who've ever spent money online using a credit card, they go to e-commerce out the window. That is the problem with e-commerce in the country. Not the platform, not the product, it's the traffic. It's the biggest problem you're going to face when you launch your site. It is the biggest problem I face on a daily basis. One of the ways to solve that problem is social. Um, there's some free things that you can do that you probably think is a no-brainer, but when you start building a business, you forget to do. Customer service, we were talking about it earlier. Customer service is free. It's a free service that you give to your customers, and challenges when you're, a, when you're giving customer service equal sales. For every person who's complained about my socks, I've given them a free pair and they've gone out to buy five more. Because I take the time to email them and go, I'm really sorry you've had a really crappy experience. It's my fault. Send me back your socks or I will fetch them and I'll give you free socks. They go on to tweet people, Instagram the photos, Facebook hybrid my services. Service is free. Gary Vaynerchuk wrote a book called The Thank You Economy. If you've got time on your hands, go and read that book. The brand that cares the most wins the end. Zappos has famously said that they happen to be a service company that happens to sell, sell shoes. That's true for all of us. 
We're all in the service industry and we happen to sell products. So start getting your service right. The good ways to do service, email, email lists, just a quick aside on email lists. I'll give you some real numbers from my, my experience today. I've got an email list, I call them my Socaholics. Um, the Socaholics are 500 strong at the moment, and I send an email once every two weeks. And today I sent an email with a discount special, and I had 500 people sent the mail to, I had 280 people open, so my conversion was 40% give or take. I had 28% of those people click, and from that, I had 12 orders in one day, which is more than I've done for the last 12 days, as I told you, no orders. Today I made two and a half thousand rand from one email. Think about that, right? It took me half an hour to send an email, put it together, special, WooCommerce makes it really easy to put the specials in and sales, send, and Sean Norman said it, I hit send and I made two and a half thousand rand. Emails, friggin' work. Don't let anyone mark your emails. Emails work, better than anything else I've ever done. So the other things that I do obsessively, I've got an Instagram account that I post photos of my socks and shoes and other people's socks and shoes and my outfits and what I wear and how I match it with my socks and shoes. Socks are my thing, Instagram account is filled with socks. I've made more sales from Instagram than I have on any other social platform because my brand is visual, but it takes engagement. I need to engage and there are very specific things you can do. I like 100 photos a day that are relevant to my brand. For every 100 likes that I do, I get 10 new followers. Statistically, this is not a guess, statistically, every 100 likes, 10 new followers. Every 20 comments, 5 new followers. So if you go on and you comment relevant stuff to your audience, you get engaged, you get new followers. And if you engage with those followers and you share your links, they buy socks. Really, really simple stuff. Stuff you know. Twitter, I've got an active Twitter account, I've got an active Facebook page. Facebook is friggin' useless for conversions. Great for conversation, terrible for conversions. I've not made a single sale through Facebook. Not one in eight months. And I track them, I've got affiliate links, and I do everything the right way. Um, so think about what you do in the social space and divide your attention to the places that are relevant and that converts. Because as much as this is fun for me, and it is fun, it needs to make me money. And the closing rule, and I have 30 seconds, this works out well. Um, the closing principle for my business in relation to Nexox was that if it wasn't profitable, it wouldn't continue. That's as simple as it is, right? When you come from a VC space, you can spend everyone's money, you don't have to be profitable for as long as you like, and you just raise more money. That's not really a comfortable space to be for a small business. So I decided from day one that if I couldn't earn enough money to make the next batch of socks, I would shut the company down. And so far, it's been eight months, and we've continued to sell enough socks to make more socks. And that's how we're gonna build the business, slowly and with profit. So that's kind of where I have to end, because it's 20 minutes. Um, please feel free to ask me any questions. I've had a lot of technical issues with payments and recurring billing and you name it, so hit me up with any questions. Thank you very much. Um, just got a microphone here. If you've got a question, take it around. Um, Nicole, answer up here. We've got one question on Twitter from Corvus Lowe. Oh, only one question. Um, He's just asked, um, what was or is your biggest mistake? Ever or with Nick Sox? <laughs> Nick Sox. Um, sure, that's a good question. Um, it's not a mistake, but it's one that I'm on the verge of making. Um, in, in retail, this, in a lot of industries, there's something called vertical integration, where you own the entire process from top to bottom. So I'm getting to a point with Nick Sox that I'm not earning enough margin to do the big deals that I need to do. So it's either now going to be a matter of pull back and let this be a side project and be fun, or go balls to the wall and spend a lot of money and own the process and start buying my own sock machines and getting really deep into it that I have a day job. So that balance, which I've been through many, many times, out of interest, I've started nine businesses in the last 10 years. Only one has, fa has succeeded, all other eight have failed. So failure is very top of mind here, but you know, I've made a lot of mistakes. So I think that the biggest mistake that I'm going to make is choosing. Uh, whichever way you look at it, um, one of these things is going to fail. It's not cool. really a good answer. Yeah. Well, um, cool, could actually get a PPS package from my back. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. So just what's your full sort of e-commerce setup? You use WooCommerce? Is your merchant, what do you, cool. how do you find them? Yeah, cool. So from top to bottom, back to friends, um, WooCommerce, WordPress, Obox theme, um, 
Props to Obox. I use them for all my things. They are hands down top top team company. Sorry, we deemed it WooCommerce. Um, <laughs> then on the payment side, um, I've had a lot of I've had a lot of tricks with this and a lot of complication. Yeah, so, uh, payments is a massive, massive, massive problem. Um, I recently today read an article that PayPal is about to activate RANDs, which is game changing for everyone who's interested in e-commerce. Because right now, for those of you who don't know what the problem is. Um, PayPal doesn't accept brands as a currency, it just doesn't. Stupid is as stupid does, it just doesn't. So if you have an e-commerce store, you need to set your base currency to dollars. But in South Africa, my audience is in rand, so now I'm serving South Africans a dollar number as a price. So I've now written, out of interest, I'm just about to start selling like a, a plugin on WooCommerce that converts your store's base currency to dollars, but puts the front end out, at whatever currency your user wants and exports that to your payment provider. That's the next step. Yep. So, so, so what are you using right now? PayPal? Right now, no, I'm not using PayPal, I'm using PayFast. PayFast. Um, my gate for recurring billing I will start using, but I needed to get a merchant account to do recurring billing. That took me six months with FNB. Thank you for fucking nothing. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, FNB were terrible. I love my bank, but they were friggin' terrible with this. It took them six months to get me a merchant account. Um, so that's the setup on the payment side of things. I also do do cash on collection if people want to fetch them from me. Um, interestingly, in Africa and in the emerging markets, cash on delivery is becoming one of the most successful ways of converting users. Even, even in uh, America, Walmart, yeah. uh, cash on delivery. It's, it's something that we need to get over in a cult, as a culture in terms of trust that, oh, the person's not going to give me the cash. But cash and delivery will change your business because people won't need any cards or banks to do anything. In Nigeria, it's friggin' huge. People are getting um, their shopping done, their daily grocery shopping done, cash on delivery. So the store is literally delivering it to their door and they're giving them the cash and they're moving along because traffic is so bad in Lagos. So cash and delivery, think about it. Yeah. Just one more question. Um, sorry. But uh, I, I tried to do a similar thing with the currency conversion. Yeah. And you have to pay for requests generally from any reliable resource or whatever. No, there's Google Open Source Currency Exchange and there's another one that I can tell you about after as I can't think of what it is. There's two that are free that you can use. Yeah. This isn't IT related, but do you have any trends or colors in your stocks in terms of best sellers? And Absolutely. Of the, the no brain leader was our very first sock. It's called the Barbershop Sock, which is a spiral barbershop. Um, hands down, everyone, whenever they see me and find out I'm from next socks, they're like, oh, when are you going to do more barbershops? Yeah. The trick is we don't, because of stock and being a small business, we limited edition, so if you miss out the first time, you miss out forever. Um, but there, there really aren't trends on the scale that I sell things, you can't pick up trends. Globally, though, there are some very distinct trends in fashion. Right now, um, animal prints. Whatever reason, animal print is coming back hugely, but in a very different way with bright colors. So you'll have a giraffe print in pink, or you'll have a camo. Camo is coming back. Camo. Except you'll have camo in pink and green, and not green and brown like normal. So those sort of things are coming back quite strongly. Um, sock making is interesting because you're limited by the sock machine. You can't have more than five colors on a single line. So that means you can only have five colors on a line. Very interesting to think about. Um, and there are only certain things that the machines can physically do. Lots of detail, but certain amounts of things. So I stick to very geometric shapes and colors. And are, are the machines able to make BBs as well? Is no, there... these sock machines are sock machines exclusively. I've asked them because I want to do scars. Yeah. No. So the next things on the queue for us are next socks, next jocks. That's the next thing that's coming. A lot of jokes. Um, and then we're going to start doing statement items. So for men, items that make you stand out without making you look different. Key things. Yeah. Um, Paul Smith is the guy who coined the phrase statement items. You should go and check out his stuff. Yes. And do you have any understanding of your customer base? Are yeah. they, yeah, where yeah. do they live? What do they like? That's where I live and die. It's my customer base. Um, so they're mainly men um, between the ages of 25 and 35, mostly in Cape Town, but I do ship a fair amount on a monthly basis abroad. So I've got customers in London, New York, uh, Miami, Australia, Germany. Germany is a really, really odd, big business for e-commerce right now. If you can, you should launch a business in Germany. Lots of great money. Um, and interestingly, a lot of moms who are buying for their sons and around uh, their peak times where my audience changes. Father's Day, really, really big for me. Um, lots of women, and I mean, this is really sexist to say, but they take their father's credit card, the daughters, and they buy him socks with his credit card, and I think it's great. Um, yeah, so I have some good insights. How do you know this? Do you 
I, I cross-reference a lot of stuff. So email, my Sarcoholics email, a lot of the people give more information than you'll ever believe on the sign-up. Yeah, I, I mean, out of interest, because I have a mobile background, on a mobile sign-up sheet, whether your sign-up sheet is two forms or 20, the user will sign up. They've spent the time and money to get there, you may as well ask them for stuff. So ask. They will, if they want your product, don't be shy. Ask them for their name, their gender, their location. Ask them for whatever you want. If they don't like it, sorry, tough shit, they'll move along. Chances are, if it's there, they'll fill it in. Then I cross-reference my Twitter and my Facebook and my Instagram and see who's following me that's ordered. Then I see what they post. So you can really delve deep if you start getting social, get an email list, and track your users. But I mean, look, WooCommerce and Google Analytics both have got reports that you can cross-reference and very, very valuable stuff. Yes. Um, yeah, just one more question over here. Yeah. Tweet me if you've got more, I'm happy to answer. So a lot of the people here are obviously tech people. Yeah. You and I know the media. Yeah. You're a tech person. Yeah. You go into the media, you try and try and create a story around it. The one thing you didn't discuss was the correlation in sparking sales and sparking media, which media up is the most yes. successful and great story. Question. I thought you were gonna give me a really hard question. <laughs> I thought you were gonna be great. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. There's so much to cover, like um, when, you know, when you love what you do, there's so much to talk about. Um, so that's a really, really good point. PR has been a killer thing for me, um, but I've tracked it very closely, and the things that really suck for a desktop e-commerce site, yeah, radio, useless. Completely useless. I've been on 702 twice, I've been featured on some local stations, no, no conversions, no traffic, nothing. And think about the user experience, right? So I've done a lot of research into this through my time in media. When you're driving in your car and someone reads a URL out, what do you do? You pull over and enter it into your phone? No. You carry on driving and you forget the URL. So print works like nothing on earth for, for desktop stuff because the chances are you're reading the magazine, you like it, you'll get up, you'll go sit by your computer and you put the URL in. Okay? The thing that worked the most for me were the big media outlets online. I got featured in The Guardian in the UK on their fashion page for a week. I did more sales in that week than I've done in eight months. So. You know, you can't beat big media. As much as you think SEO and a little bit of spend here and there, big media and PR really does change your business. Um, and most of those clients were overseas, which is even better. Cool, guys, thank you for your time. Thank you.